Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia and today we're all going to be managing our farm of silkworms, that's right, in silk. In this game you've got your shepherd, you've got your shepherding dog, you've got of course your silkworms and your nurseries and you are trying to raise these silkworms, have them eat the pasture, score you victory points for that. There's also a monster out there in the hills and you want to avoid that creature. So whoever gets the most victory points, silk points, is going to be the winner of the game. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this works together. We'll come on back after that. I'll tell you what I think of it. Here we've got the board set up ready to begin. The tiles are randomly set out. Depending on the number of players, that denotes the size of the board. You have to make sure that you include this one tile with this creature, the Ukami, somewhere in the mix. Then the players are going to take turns deploying some of their silkworms out, seven of these. And then counterclockwise, all seven of those are out there. They're going to deploy three other things. Everybody gets to put out one silk uh, a nursery here. They're going to put out their shepherd. And they're going to put out their doggy here, their mastiff. And once those are all on the board, then you are ready to begin. There are also set aside, I'm not going to show you too much of it, the board, the scoreboard here. Everybody starts with five silk points, i.e. victory points. And it tells you on here what the goals are for the player. So in a three-player game, 40 victory points is the goal and the end game trigger. And then you've got this other board over here, which is where the players are going to be taking actions using these two dice, all right? So we'll get back to that in just one second. So uh, the bonuses over here are going to come into play for different things, accomplishing different things. I'll reference these as I explain them on the action board over here. The action board has the six die faces, as well as an area right here for the creature to capture the silkworms, and they would go right there. So on your turn, the first thing you do is you put out a new silkworm, you raise one. This can go either around one of your nurseries, so there for example, or somewhere where you already have some silkworms, such as there, and there is room. Each child can only have three of them, so I could do that for example. Then roll the two dice. Now these dice are going to, as I said, allow you to take actions on the board, but you can pay silk points, pay your victory points, to modify these dice on a one-to-one -one basis. And the dice do wrap around, so I could play a single, I could pay a single point and make this six into a one if I so choose, okay? And now I use those two dice to take these actions. So the actions are as follows. For a one face, you get to do that raise a silkworm action again. Just put out another silkworm. For two, you can move your shepherd or your mastiff, and they are going to uh, move around the silkworms and also contend with the creature here. So the uh, shepherd can move the dogs around, and they can move the silkworms around. When you move into a space that has silkworms, you have to move them off of it however you want to. So I could push this one, say, this way, and these two this way to benefit myself. So that could be that action if I use a two. Also, if I move the shepherd into where the dog is, I have to move it. And the she the uh, mastiff here can also shepherd, of course, the silkworms. When it comes to the creature, uh, the shepherd will run away from the creature, so it can bump the creature. And that's the concept all over the game here, this idea of bumping uh, pieces around the board. But the dog can bump the creature away. And so if the creature, by the way, ever comes into a spot where there are silkworms, it will capture them and they will all go right in there. So that's another thing you can do is move the shepherd or the dog around. Next up, building a wall. You can build a wall from one of your nurseries or next to a previously built wall. So the first one could go there, the next one could go there, and so on. This is going to prevent movement except for the shepherd can still go over them, all right? Next up is building one of these uh, nurseries. There are four of them per player, and when you build one, you have to make sure, just like during setup, that it's at least two tile faces or spaces away, so this would be okay. This is going to give you a couple of things. You are going to, of course, be able to build walls from it. You are going to be able to put out new silkworms from it uh, around where it is. You also have to make sure when you build it, that it is built next to your shepherd. So my shepherd being here, I could put this over here, for example. I couldn't put it there because it's only one away from that other nursery. So I could put it there and then start building walls from it. 
and as you are building walls, you are going to get possibly some uh, bonus points. So this one over here is for the first player to build out all four of their nurseries, their silk nurseries. Uh, this one over here is for the first player to put out a wall that is five or more in length. This one over here is for the first player to enclose an area with walls that is at least three tiles. You're gonna get some bonus points. And this one, I might as well tell you what it is now, is for the first player to have all of their silk worms out onto the board. So you're gonna get some bonus points for that. Next up, going back to our board over here. Uh, one other thing that happens if you've already built all four of your uh, silk uh, nurseries is you can instead, when you take this action, replenish the tiles out here. So if they are barren, they would be replenished. How do they become barren? By the next one here, the grazing. The silkworms, and you choose this action, are going to eat the pasture. So for example, let's say it's my turn, I rolled a five and I have these silkworms there, I'm going to get some victory points, some silk points from that. I multiply the number of my own by the type of tile it is, this one being the best one, three victory points. I have two little dudes there, so I get six victory points on the board, and then they have to move, and then I flip that over to the barren side. And then lastly, let you move the Ukami here for a six. The Ukami, just like the Shepherd and the Mastiff, do wrap around the board, but when they move into a spot, of course, as I said, with the silkworms, they're going to uh, capture them. Or if you move into a spot where the shepherd is, shepherd has to run away. So you continue manipulating all of these things, giving yourself uh, more victory points for controlling the juicy tiles, creating the walls, getting these victory points, trying to enclose areas that you control, i.e. you have more nurseries around that uh, fence than the other players. And then once someone gets to 40 victory points, that triggers the end of the game. At the end of the game, every player is going to score whatever they've enclosed that they control. You are also going to do one final grazing of everything on the board and score victory points for that. And then lastly, every player is going to lose a victory point for each one of the silkworms that is still sitting here in the Ukami's den. There is a way for you to get these back, but if you have any there, you're going to be penalized for it. And that's it, that's how the game flows. So manipulate all of these things with the dice roll, manipulate the dice rolls themselves, and try to get the most victory points you can. So let's go back up top, and let me tell you what I think of the game. So that is Silk, I'll tell you, definitely not what I thought this game was gonna be when I first saw the cover of the game. Uh, it just wasn't the kind of abstract, uh, uh, sort of, you know, puzzly nature I was expecting from the game. Having said that, once I got into it, there are many things in it I, I did enjoy, but there's a lot of things I didn't as well. So let's break it down, okay? I'm going to start with the things I liked, and I'll end with the things I wasn't a big fan of, so I can spend a little time articulating that, hopefully. So things I do like, the theme, it's quirky, it's bizarre, I, I like the spin on the theme. And the aesthetics, I think, are very well done. The tiles are attractive, all of the little meeples are cute and well done. Uh, artwork all over the place is great, so the whole thing looks like a quality product, except for the fences. I wish they would have gone with just standard Catan roads, right, the little rods. These are, have a little bit of a bevel side, and they are a little thin. So I'm not, a, you know, I'm not a big fan of those. I know that we're going for what a fence looks like, but, um, not a fan of those pieces. Everything else looks very nice. And then lastly, tactics. Yeah, the game has a lot of tactics because in many ways it feels like an abstract game. You are trying to manipulate those dice and then affect this board in ways in which you can put yourself in an advantageous spot. It feels abstract, uh, but then with dice on top of that. Which is a combination a lot of people are not going to like, actually. And I myself am a little of two minds about it, you know. Things I thought were just okay. Replayability in the game. The theme gets me through the door and, and then once I start playing it, that abstract nature with a random die roll that if I don't get what I want, I have to spend my actual victory points to modify, hurts that replayability for me. And then the game length. The game isn't particularly long, but again, the dice uh, make me make it feel to me like it's outstaying its welcome a little bit. You know, I also don't like the cadence in the game. 
the idea of getting to a certain number of victory points and that being the end game trigger I don't know I just um, I'm not a big fan of it I, I don't like that part of it it feels like if you just ignore a bunch of this other stuff and just plow ahead to just get victory points by having your silkworms eat up the land while the other players are worrying about putting out new nurseries and building fences and all that it kind of hurts the the feel of the game you know it kind of seems like it should be a game about building but you can ignore that and just book it to the 30 40 points whatever you need and it kind of destroys the cadence for me so i'm not a big fan of that it's kind of a hard thing to articulate lastly the thing i really don't like in the game is the ease of play unfortunately this is one of those games that is very simple in concept, cute in theme, and obtuse in implementation. There are a lot of little rules in this game. To the point that it pushes it, for me, outside of the target market that I would want to share this game with. Based again on its theme, its look, what's going on in the game. It's a little too much going on with the little rules. You know, this idea of like, oh, put out... This piece bumps this piece, but not this piece, and you build the fence, but next to the nursery, but the nursery doesn't get built unless it's next to the shepherd. And those are all fine, and they all are, are sensical, you know, which is why, again, I like the theme in the game. But, boy, is it is it a lot of little things to keep in mind and to remember and to attempt to um, teach when you're, when you're teaching the game. So it doesn't get a whole lot of praise when it comes to the ease of... Not just play, but teaching the game as well. So overall, the game's not bad. I'm not I'm not destroying it here, don't get me wrong. But um, I am a little bit disappointed that this isn't something a little more in tune with what this cover leads me to believe it's going to be. That's partly why this is one I don't see myself playing a whole lot of anymore. You know, I was just a little sort of underwhelmed by the whole experience. So there you go. If the game looks good to you, though, I would certainly say there's nothing wrong with the production here. There is no major flaws. It just did not work for me because combining the abstract nature with the dice, with spending your own victory points to manipulate and step away from just bad luck, um, the meandering sort of feel, all the little rules that get in the way of just making progress and enjoying the product, those things are what hold it back from for, for me, uh, personally. So, that's it for me. Silk, check this one out if it sounds like it's something you're going to enjoy. I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.